morning from a very cold west coast here in South Africa. I'm currently up the west coast with Oliver and we are looking for Namakwa rain frogs, scalodes and a bunch of other stuff. And we haven't even been here five minutes and Oliver's already turned up his dream. He friend. seems to be immobilized. <laughs> He's a little bit cold. He's actually very cold, but You're heating him up. <laughs> Yeah, he's uh, thermoregulating in the sun. Hot that, potato. That is a very, very cold Namakwa rain frog. Um, you can see the size reference. He's yeah, he's actually an excuse of the Namakwa rain frog. But we've just got here, so hopefully we're gonna find a whole bunch more and ones that actually look like frogs. But once again, the frog boy provides the goods. <laughs> so with the trusty scuffle. We just got onto our second breviceps of the day, a couple minutes after the first one. This is um, a real size one, a lot bigger than the first one. He's just covered with a whole bunch of sand. You can see once they clean up a bit, they've got these really nice markings on the dorsal here. But he's just a very cold, sad sand boy. Oh, there he is, opening his eyes a little bit. but. We'll grab some photos of it and try to clean them off and I'll show you what he actually looks like other than just a massive blob of sand. But yeah, this is Brevi Sips and I'm a You can see they've actually got these really nice eyes once he opens them. That we just turned up just in the shade. Um, you can see the colors a little bit better and being a nocturnal animal, I don't really want to put them out in the sun all that much for video. But yeah, you can just see they've got these huge eyes. Like I was saying earlier, that classic sort of breviceps face. And really nice dorsal markings at the top there. You can see he's got a little bit of that um, toxin from the frog toxin. But yeah, he's been pretty cooperative um, up until this point. So I don't really want to stress him out too much. Just give you guys another quick look and I'm going to put them back in the soft sand and you'll see them sort of dig away and, and burrow like they naturally do. So have a look at this. This is a froglet of a breviceps oh man um, I want to show you what he looks like underneath because you can virtually see right through them you can see their sort of internal organs it's pretty crazy but yeah this is a super tiny one I mean you can see them in my hand this would have been a couple of weeks old at the, at the most um, and the interesting thing with these breviceps they don't actually have a tadpole stage like many other frogs where the female will lay a small clutch of eggs um, typically guards the eggs and then the tiny frogs emerge fully developed from the eggs ready to go so there's obviously no tadpole stage because we're in an area where there's just very little water there's basically no freestanding water so they just live under the sand in sort of typical habitat like this there's trash there's mole heaps there's all sorts of habitat and if you can see there's Oliver down there. I think he's photographing a, another breviceps or maybe a tortoise. But cool, I'm gonna quickly grab some pictures of this little dude and keep going to the next spot. So to give a break from some of the sand, um, I found a couple of rocks. Well, these aren't rocks. These are just pieces of concrete. I haven't seen a lot of concrete here, so these isolated sections hopefully will provide something. There's lots of like I was saying earlier, the fossorial lizards, a lot of little um, geckos and skinks that we also can hopefully get after. There you go. What is that? It looks like a Macontius. It's one of the big lizards. Just his little tail sticking out there. Let's see if we can dig him out here. It's a really small one. And he's absolutely freezing gold. I don't even know how these guys survive you can see he's obviously a limbless lizard the total lack of having 
any limbs and he's got a tiny little little focus on here almost like a beak on his head there that he used to obviously plow through the um plow through the substrate it's pretty cool like i said this is just a a really small one and we'll hopefully see a couple more in there they come in a few different sort of um varieties they're quite variable in their, in their color so yeah we're gonna grab a quick voucher and we're gonna carry on so here's just a look at the grey dwarf legless skink. Um, this is a contest grey eye. Um, as you can see, they are really small. Um, this is pretty much an average size one. They do get a little bit bigger, um, but quite an interesting species with a relatively small distribution that goes up the west coast, sort of favouring this loose sandy soil. Um, and they sort of hide under rocks. This guy's been sitting really nice for photographs. We're just going to let him go on his way. So I just got that little contest and Oliver's got a super nice looking um, brave sips here. Give the shade here. This is quite different to the other little one we got. He's almost, I think this must be the leopard morph. Um, no, it's just variation. See, so those nice big eyes, and that's pretty much a nice, decent size one. Um, but yeah, having good luck with these guys, so we're hopefully going to turn up some other stuff. So I was just moving these little rocks on the top of this one just to get to the base rock here. Um, and I came across this guy. This is a newly hatched Gorgia incognito. You can see, obviously, just in relation to my thumb, how small he is. He's shame. He's incredibly cold, moving like a little bit of a spaz. But yeah, these guys are really common in abundance on this west coast sort of scrub amongst these chunks of concrete, um, under tree bark and old rotting logs. Um, this is a really small one, as I said, so I'm not going to waste too much time. I'm trying to photograph it. I just want to get him out the way so I can turn over the rock that he's under and work through the rest of this pile. Um, so yeah, I'll just find a safe place to put him and hopefully turn up some more stuff. Just turned up another micro rain frog while looking for, oops, sorry, bro, but looking for breviceps, looking for skeletes in these mole heaps. But yeah, we've seen quite a lot of these today. I don't want to keep them out in the sun and stress them out any longer than we need to. So I'm just going to pop him back in his little mole heap and he will just bury himself back in there. So here we go, here's the second species of a contest for today. Um, this is a different species to the other one we got. This is just the more common and much larger a contest meliagris, the Cape legless skink. You can see he's also super cold at the moment. Um, yeah, much bigger, quite variable. We see a lot of these guys in my other videos that I post from all the Cape Town stuff. So I'm not going to go on about him too much. Just grab a couple of voucher shots. I'm going to have to just move him out the way so I can put his rock back. And it's quite cool when you look under his rock here, you can see all these various burrows where he's obviously um, been cruising around and he was just under a lump of um, concrete here. But pretty cool, already getting off to a pretty decent start with finding some good numbers of herbs. And yeah, this is the Cape Dwarf, no, this is the Cape Legless Skink, not the Cape Dwarf Skink. Cape Legless Skink, Contius Miliagris. So here's just a look at the um, Cape Legless Skink. I've just finished grabbing some photographs of it. Um, and now, of course, when I want to show you how it moves, it just sits. Um, but yeah, he's really cold as I flipped him under that rock. But it's not gonna move too much. But yeah, if you can look closely, you'll see he's got tiny little eyes. Most people mistake them for snakes, but obviously anything with a blinking eye can't possibly be a snake, but very difficult to try. Give that rationale to some people. But yeah, this is just the Cape Legless Kink. Really common snake, really common lizards. Um, out here on the west coast as you can hear the seagulls in the background um, but yeah finished getting some photos of him so I'm just going to put him back under his rock and he's gonna go on his way and there he goes he's gone straight back under the rock so I just flipped this absolute unit of a Namako rain frog this is a Breviceps namaquensis you can see he's got a little bit of this sort of these this white sort of toxin um, as part of his defensive measure. As I was just digging through the sand, um, I obviously just disturbed him and he got a little bit upset. 
and yeah they sort of release that sort of toxin i don't want to disturb him too much i've already sort of awoken him from his slumber so i'm not going to mess with him too much i think they do this um which i always try to avoid as much as possible where they um, they do this the squeak which is um quite sort of infamous on the internet uh, with these frogs and people always want to see it but it's really just the animal being extremely stressed so it's sort of a stress reduction or a stress strategy so I, I don't want to do that but I'm just going to pick him up really quickly and just work through the rest of this piece of sand and then just bury him back so I'm hoping he doesn't freak out too much uh, he's all right um, but as you can see he's absolutely enormous much much larger than the the other ones we've been seeing i mean if you see him next to my hand here just to get an idea but yeah the grumpiest frog of them all brave sips namaquensis his brother and can go back just cover him up so he's not stressed and then he'll burrow when he needs to so i'm just going to show you guys again how we sort of work through um these sort of mole heaps, just very gently moving the sand, um, using the little scuffle or a little hand rake just to avoid getting stabbed by any glass or wire. Um, so yeah, we're just going to move along in this little area, but have a look at this. Um, this is just a little, really small angular tortoise um, that I actually just spotted um, as I was digging the first mole heap, but he seems like he's a little shy um, and doesn't really want to come out of his shell. I'm actually not too sure what's going on with this shell here. It looks quite sort of um, white and chalky. It almost looks like he's sort of been painted or he's gone through a field of dust or, or something like that because they're usually quite sort of white and vibrant. But I'm going to leave him here um, just to give you guys an, an idea of what his sort of habitat looks like. Um, and yeah, this is the angular tortoise. We're probably going to see loads more, so nothing too special. This is just another really dark looking cape skink that I turned up under some sheets of old bark uh, on top of this really soft, loose sand, which these contests really like. I mean, they, you can see as he sort of goes in the ground, if he sort of gets going, um, they push through the sand with that modified sort of tough snout of theirs. Um, and as quickly as he appeared, he equally... Um, quickly disappears so yeah we're gonna carry on going and hopefully see what else we can bump into and would you look at that <laughs> yet another angular tortoise this is actually quite a, a nice looking one you can see um, he's got a bit of color to his shell obviously quite worn they seem to um, really fade out oh it looks like he's gonna come out of his shell these guys either stay put in their shell or like this guy once they sort of get a little bit of confidence he'll um, come out of shell and just barge his way through anything like instead of going around the plant he's trying to barge right through it but we've seen quite a lot of these guys I'm just gonna let him go on his way I got a quick cell phone shot just for iNaturalist and hopefully we're gonna see if we can't turn up any more rain frogs and some more scalates so when I was thinking about turning up a couple of more rain frogs I wasn't quite thinking we'd find one as small as this this is a really young Namaqua rain frog, um, or a froglet really. Um, as you can see he just was turned up in that little mole heap by Oliver, just sort of exited him out there. We got a couple of photos so we're just going to let him go. I'm just going to make a little depression in the sand here um, and just get it, keep him here in the shade and then when he's ready he'll just burrow down and go back into the underworld of the Breviceps land. So I just turned up another little Cape Legless skink under a little chunk of concrete here. Um, got a quick voucher shot for the iron ass, of course. Um, just freaking out a little bit. So yeah, I'm just going to let him go back in the soil there. And you'll see once he goes, he just goes and goes. And that's him. Just got another little angular tortoise over here. Um, I'll try to see if this guy will come out so you can have a bit of look at him. But yeah, he seems like a shower. And sometimes they just charge and run around and other times they don't want to come out at all but i'm going to set up a time lapse real quick and hopefully you can catch him as he moves out and goes on his way so 
So here's just a look at one of the other Namako rain frogs. We picked up about four or five, um, just all in little mole heaps, which is pretty typical of them as they burrow in, in the softest of soil. Um, you can see they've got these gorgeous big googly eyes that pretty much in that grumpy little face, which is quite sort of well known by sort of anyone who's ever used the internet. Um, <laughs> it's quite a meme frog, as I generally say in all the videos. I'm um, going to put him on the floor quickly and just see if he does anything. Typically they don't jump or hop like I've said in some of the other videos, but they typically just sit around acting like a little blob. Cool, so after just photographing some of these breviceps, we made a tactical reassessment and we are at another site, um, very similar in habitat to the first site, but there's quite a lot of trash. So we're going to see if we can't turn up any snakes. It's warmed up considerably, um, a lot more than I thought it was going to be today. And you can see it's clear blue skies everywhere. So we're going to see if we can't get after some snakes and maybe some more scalotes. And who knows, even some more breviceps, but I will keep you in the loop of what we get. So just started working this small pile of rocks here. It's quite nice having some sort of rocks amongst the vegetation. I've been seeing tons of little, so I see if I can focus, tons of little geckos and other little lizards, but nothing we haven't seen before. Let's see if I can get this up. Oh shit. I don't know if you guys can see that in the shade there is a spotted harlequin snake a really big one um in comparison to, let me try to get them out in the sun here like i said these are venomous in the previous video but i don't consider them super dangerous but yeah you can have a good look at him that's a spotted harlequin they're a front fang de lapid so you really want to avoid bites from them but it isn't something that's going to sort of put you in a hospital or sort of do something worse oh, and there's a angular tortoise I don't know if you guys can see that yeah, he's charging but I'll just waiting for Oliver Oliver's on his way here and then I'll show you guys just a better look at this dude again sorry for that filming is a bit chaotic but yeah this is the like I said earlier spot a harlequin snake super pretty looking animals and they do these really sort of jerky movements to avoid you getting too close. But yeah, super chuffed. This is actually our first snake of the day. Well on, it's sort of just past 12 o'clock. So things have been a little bit slow on the snake front, but super chuffed. So this is the little angular tortoise that I was talking about, that I was looking at while I was trying to film and show you guys. Um, yeah, just another little one. I'm not going to mess with it. Put it right back in a little burrow under the logs there. I'm sure we're going to see loads of others. There's quite a lot of them at, the, at this site. So here's just a closer look at this harlequin snake. Um, see, when you actually go close to it, it actually goes berserk. It sort of flicks around and does all sorts of crazy looking things. Let's see if we can get a, a good look at it. It is small, so he's got a tiny head, but you can see that sort of orange stripe running all the way down the back pretty beautiful looking snakes but if they were just more cooperative that would be nice you can see it spazzes well we just finished getting some photographs of this guy contrary to the rest of his disastrous species and genus this guy was actually really good and he photographed really nicely and sat for photos which is cool so we thank you for your service and now it can go back under his same rock that we flipped him under. I tried to make a little tunnel so he could go in there, but I don't think he likes it much, but I want him to go back under there because that's where he lives. Let's see if he can't just find his own way. Go forth and under, brother. There he goes. This spot is really crawling with angular tortoises. I'm not going to mess with this guy. I'm just going to leave him, but there's another angular tortoise. I hadn't even walked two or three meters from where I just saw the other angulate. And she has a hatching. This would have been one of this year's babies, a couple of months old. Tiny little guy. 
I think he's a bit spooked. He's not going to come out of his shell. But that's no worries. We've seen quite a lot of them. So he can just stick in his shell. And we're hopefully going to see if we can't turn up any. So I just stopped to investigate this mole heap. And I heard something making a noise in the bush. And there is like the seventh or eighth angular tortoise of today. So we really have seen loads of these. But we're going to try and see what we're going to turn up in here, if anything. At least show you guys how we go through these sort of mole heaps. Just usually don't use your hands to just avoid getting um, sort of cut by glass or metal or anything else, especially in these trash dump sites. It's just generally not a good idea. But yeah, we didn't get anyone in that one. We'll keep on to the next one. Just turned up another micro rain frog while looking for, oh, sorry bro, but looking for breviceps, looking for scalotes in these mole heaps. But yeah, we've seen quite a lot of these today. I don't want to keep them out in the sun and stress them out any longer than we need to. So I'm just going to pop him back in his little mole heap and he will just bury himself back in there. So here we go. We just turned up one of the other main targets for today. This is Scalotes bipes. Um, as you can barely see, it's a dwarf burrowing skink. It's got two tiny limbs with two tiny minuscule toes. I'm giving it the name Bipes. And while I was looking at this one, Oliver was digging in that little mound of sand right next to his missing shoe. And he turned up another one. But the best part about this is the one he turned up is a completely different species because it only has a single toe on each foot, which makes it Scalotes granovi. So right here, although these skinks look completely exactly the same, these are actually two different species, um, which is pretty amazing. I'm going to get some quick photographs of them. And just as I'm about to release them, I'll show you what they look like as they dig into the sand. But pretty awesome. We have one or two more species of Scalotes in the area we're pretty keen to find. So going to get after it and see if we can't turn them up. Well, since I seem to be in a really good spot for these lizards, I thought I'd just film a few clips um, just to show you how we go through these sort of molehills, just gently parting the soil, um, looking for them. You, Like I said earlier, you can't really use your hands. A lot of these, well, this site in particular is pretty much a glorified dump site, so you can't go using your hands, but nothing in that one. So literally only pretty much at the next mole heap over from where I turned up the two and the other one that Oliver got I just turned up this one um this is also this looks like Scalodes granobi because it has a single toe but I'll show you what happens once they go in the soil and I'll see if I can't catch them again because I need to get a photograph of it they're insane they go oh, we managed to get him back uh sorry about that but yeah you can see they've got these tiny little faces these little beak snouts on them. Pretty stoked. Um, I just really, really love this genus of sort of legless lizards, which is incredibly interesting. You can see he's obviously had a, a regenerated tail sometime in the not too distant past. But yeah, we're going to keep on going and see if we can't get the Kaznara, which is our main, main target. Just stumbled onto this gross site. Um, but as I was walking through, I saw a pretty big. It is really old, um, but a pretty crispy snake shed. Have a look what this guy looks like. Looks like a large mole snake. So they should be pretty common, but I'm gonna flip. There's a lot of these old sort of tops here, and um, there's a couple more down there. So I'm just gonna flip through this trash and go through here for some scalotes and see, hopefully we can turn some up. I see there's a whole bunch of other trash down there too, so. It's... So fortunately I had some sort of intuition. I um, wasn't filming while I was trying to flip this old blanket because it was just too convoluted and I almost missed this pretty small um, Karoo sand snake. It was just, it came screaming out of that blanket. So if I was filming, there was no ways I would ever have caught it. But yeah, you can see he's, ow, oh, stop. Why must you do this? Um, yeah, I need to get them off my finger. They are rear fang venomous snakes. Okay, yeah, he was just, it was just a little bite. He didn't get sort of his fangs in there, so we're all good. But yeah, pretty cool. It's only the second snake of the day, so it's been a really slow day on snakes, but 
we are starting to turn up a lot more sort of life and lizards um, in this part. So we're going to keep at it. So I hadn't been filming for a while um, because I happened to accidentally stand in a homeless person's toilet, which was not ideal. So I had stuff you don't want all over your shoes. But I just flipped a, another Kuru sand snake. This is quite a, a decent size one compared to the other one. Let's see if I can't just get a better look at him. Yeah, he was just under a roof tile in an old pile of concrete. Same species as the other little one I showed you guys. Um, something we see quite a lot of down here in the Cape. They are probably one of the most common snakes out here in this sort of sand fault area. But yeah, nice, nice to get another snake. It's been relatively quiet. We've only this is only the third or fourth snake. Actually, I saw another one that I missed just now, just basking in a bush. But yeah, always nice to see more snakes. But we're gonna grab a few photos of these guys. These guys are super cool. They got these bright orange bellies and these pointy little heads. But yeah, we're gonna grab a few photos and just let them go. So the light is really bad, um, unfortunately, but this is the lodge of the Karoo sand sinks that I flipped just now, just under a roof tile and a pile of concrete. Typical West Coast herping. Um, I really enjoy these guys, these um, Smophus, the entire genus actually of these Karoo, or well, this is the Karoo sand snake. They sort of replace the Philothamnus of the areas much further sort of north places like KwaZulu-Natal, um, parts of the Eastern Cape, Mpumalanga and Limpopo. Uh, yeah, because down here in the Western Cape, the Philothamnus are few and far between and where I currently live, there actually are no species of Philothamnus. So I'm going to make do with the next best thing, which are these Karoo sand snakes. Um, you can see once they sort of have calmed down, they just relax and you can really just pose them as you like. They really really mellow out but yeah this guy um like i said we're just under a roof tile i'm going to put him back under his pile of trash and he can carry on doing his thing i'm just gonna grab a couple more photos one or two for iNaturalist um, and we are gonna get going so we're pretty much done for the day and i decided to hit one more mole heap and i flipped the exact thing I, this is like the top of the list for the targets of today Scalodes kasnari. You can see they've got these massive rear limbs. They don't have any forelimbs, just with two toes on each limb. And you can see he's got these crazy sharply pointed head with that dark band dis dissecting the eye. And they also live in these mole heaps. Um, I actually found it. I've actually just released it now. But there was actually a Namako rain frog in this little mound where this guy was. And I'll show you once you put them on the floor. They just freak out <laughs> and yeah so that is gonna be the last well sorry about that that's gonna be the last here for the day i'll show you as i go release him here how he'll disappear into the sand come on scalotes you're free to go and do your thing brother you can see they froth around and into the sand and there he goes he's so i was just trying to release the scalotes and i was just digging it up just because i needed a better clip and i turned up this little breviceps who was just in the mound right where the casnari was so pretty awesome so at least the west coast delivered that is pretty much going to be the last set of herbs for today well, so we're done for the day. We're just heading into the shop, grab something to eat, something to drink. It's been a pretty long day in the sun and I'll catch up with you guys again tomorrow when I get out.